In late November 1939, the Soviet Union launched its offensive into Finland. Over 450,000 Soviet soldiers invaded their much smaller neighbor, signaling the start of the Winter War. The Soviet behemoth was way more powerful than the Finnish army, and although the Finns offered unexpectedly fierce resistance, the war ended within four months. Among those brave Finnish soldiers was Lauri Alan Turney. During the initial stages of the conflict, a merely 19-year-old soldier, Turney fiercely fought the Soviets, and during the continuation war he again served his country. Yet within a few years he joined another army unit, the German Waffen-SS. Still eventually, Lauri died in another war. His helicopter was shot down 20 years later, after the Second World War had ended, above the jungle in Vietnam. It was a helicopter of the United States Air Force with Captain Lauri, alias Laurie Thorne, on board. His story is an exceptional one of a young man that served in three different armies and is remembered for his personal courage. Following high school, Lauri enrolled in business school and joined the Finnish Civil Guard. In 1938, at the age of 19, he enlisted in the Finnish Army. He joined the 4th Independent Jaeger, an elite infantry unit. Fate had it that one year later, the Soviet Union invaded Finland. Lauri was sent to the front and saw action for the first time. It was a battle of David versus Goliath. Although the victory of this Finnish David would not be after a defeat and several more years of war. The Winter War is notorious for the Soviets thinking they could quickly overrun the way smaller and inferior equipped Finnish army. Nevertheless, the fierce resistance the Finns put up was a proper reality check for the Soviets. Using guerrilla tactics, the Finns managed to hold out for four months, much longer than anyone expected, and what is more, inflicting much more damage than initially anticipated. Larry too did his part. Using guerrilla tactics, he engaged the Soviets at current day Sosnovo and fought under the command of General Harald Uqvist. Yet Finland had no other option but to sign the Moscow Peace Treaty in March 1940. Due to his exceptional bravery in battle following the war, Lauri was promoted to the rank of second lieutenant. Because the Moscow Treaty was only a delay of the next war, something many Finns realized, the soldiers did not pause their training. During the interim peace that lasted from March 1940 to June 41, Finland and Nazi Germany's ties strengthened and intensified. Finland mainly relied on Germany for military aid and the supply of weaponry. The Finnish military helped with the planning of Operation Barbarossa, and allowed German troops on their territory. In turn, the Germans agreed to train Finnish soldiers. Lauri, as a matter of fact, moved to Vienna, Austria, where he joined the Waffen-SS and trained with them for two months. He reached the rank of Untersturmführer, more or less the equivalent of second lieutenant. In spring 1941, he returned to Finland and received the command over a special ski troop, Finnish soldiers on skis that would wage guerrilla warfare against the enemy, oftentimes behind enemy lines. Now, Lauri happened to just return at the right time, because in June 1941, Operation Barbarossa was launched by Nazi Germany. In response, the Soviets invaded Finland, again, in order to secure their northern border. This conflict became known as the War of Continuation. As for Lauri's unit during this war, they did suffer many casualties, but due to Lauri distinguishing himself for his exceptional exploits, the unit became unofficially known as Detachment Turney. They went behind enemy lines and sabotaged Soviet military operations. The detachment didn't go unnoticed among the Soviets either, and a pretty hefty bounty was placed on Larry's head. Three million Finnish marks, which apparently is roughly the equivalent of 650,000 USD. Yet nobody could catch this bounty because within a year, Larry himself skied into a mine and suffered considerable injuries. Disregarding the injuries, he didn't leave battle for too long. In 44, he led an infantry battalion against the Soviets, and for his exploits and bravery, he received the Mannerheim Cross, Finland's highest military decoration. It wasn't until September that year for the Moscow Armistice to be signed between Finland and the Soviet Union. The Armistice ended the War of Continuation. Now, I won't be getting much into the specifics, but one of the requirements of the Armistice was that all German forces, Finland's former ally, had to be expelled from Finland. What followed was the Lapland War, with the former allies pitted against each other. Skirmishes broke out between Finnish soldiers and their former allies, the Germans, that they had to expel. Also, the Finnish army was to be demobilized following this war, according to the treaty. Now, it has to be said that Lurie didn't support the Nazi ideology necessarily, at least I cannot find any concrete evidence for that in sources. 
But due to the demobilization of the Finnish army and his vehement anti-communism and hatred for the Soviets, Lorry saw no other option but to join the German anti-Soviet resistance. It wasn't that easy and clear-cut, though. In January 1945, he was approached by a pro-German resistance group that wanted to train him to become a saboteur in case the Soviet Union decided to invade Finland again, following the war. Wouldn't have been the first time they did that. Lorry traveled to Germany to receive his training, but because the war came to an end in March that year, he was unable to return to Finland. Right before the war ended, he picked up arms with the unit and fought against the Soviets advancing on Schwerin in northern Germany. Following a Soviet victory, Lorry fled to the west and surrendered to the British army in an attempt to escape certain execution by the Soviets. The British incarcerated him in a POW camp in Lübeck. Lorry's gamble had paid off, in a way. Now, following his imprisonment, Lorry somehow managed to escape the camp and return to Finland on his own in June. From that point, the story jumps a bit in time. But what is known is that following the Second World War, Finland tried to reject any implications of their alliance with Nazi Germany. With Lorry suddenly turning up, not just having been a member of the SS, but actually having fought with them in Germany, he became subject of symbolic politics. Due to his Mannerheim cross, it was quite a delicate case. Many considered him a war hero that simply despised the Soviets, but others saw him as a war criminal that was on the wrong side of history. Eventually, he was arrested for treason, but knowing Lorry, he escaped and was arrested again in April 1946. He was sentenced to six years in prison and escaped again. Not too long after, he was recaptured and served two years of his six-year sentence before he received a pardon from Juho Kusti Pasikivi, the Finnish president himself. As you can probably imagine, Lorry didn't receive the recognition he thought he would for trying to defend his country against the communist menace. As such, in 1950, he traveled to the United States. But it wasn't just because of personal motives. According to sources, the Soviets wanted Finland to arrest Lorry as a German collaborator, have him extradited to Moscow, and tried him for war crimes. By crossing the border with Sweden and sailing to the United States on a cargo boat, Lorry near certainly escaped a death sentence. Fate had it that the same year Lorry arrived in the United States, Congress introduced legislation that established what would become the United States Army Special Forces. Two years later, the first Special Forces unit, the Green Berets, was created. Also, thanks to the Lodge Philbin Act of June 1950, foreigners were now allowed not to just join the US military, but after five years of service, they would receive citizenship. Because of his experience and skill set, Lowry was able to enter the United States Army in 1954. He did change his name to match his new country a bit better, and from then on was known as Larry Thorne. The US Army recognized Larry for his experience, and he managed to end up in special forces teaching guerrilla warfare to recruits. Still, Larry wasn't the only one. Over 200 Eastern Europeans joined the US Army before 1959. He managed to rise through the ranks and ended up a captain when he saw his first action as a US Green Beret. In 1962, in Iran, a US C-130 plane containing classified material crashed on the Iran-Turkish-Soviet border. To be specific, it crashed on Mount Ararat, Turkey's highest mountain. The height and climate made it near impossible for rescue missions to reach the plane. After three failed attempts, Larry was sent in together with his unit and managed to secure the documents and bodies. Following this mission, Larry was sent to southern Vietnam, where the conflict in Vietnam was rapidly escalating into full-fledged war. He was wounded twice, earning him two Purple Hearts and a Bronze Medal. Due to his injuries, he was given the option to perform administrative duties, but instead Larry requested command of a special operations base. He completed his first tour with success and actually returned on a second tour in Vietnam as part of a reconnaissance and intelligence unit. With this unit, they participated in a cross-border operation into Laos and try and track the Viet Cong along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. In October 1965, the unit was on such a mission. Although it was a success, upon their return due to bad weather, the helicopter crashed into the jungle. Upon the unit's failure to return, the crew, including Larry, were listed as missing in action, only to be changed to killed in action when the wreckage of the aircraft was discovered a week later. But although the bodies of the aircrew were found, Larry's body wasn't. For a long time, it was thought he was abducted by the Viet Cong and alive somewhere in the jungle. It was fruitful ground for theories about his survival, because to his former brothers-in-arms and the public that got to know a little of his exploits, it seemed likely this larger-than-life figure would not simply have died in a helicopter crash. 
but information surrounding his possible capture remained eerily quiet, even after the war ended. It wasn't until 1999 that Lauri Turney's remains were found by a US-Finnish mission set out to locate them around the crash site. The remains were recovered, and through DNA and dental testing, it was confirmed they were Larry's. He was repatriated to the United States in a ceremony that was even attended by Madeleine Albright, the then Secretary of State. U.S. Army Special Forces Colonel Sean Swindle said during the ceremony that Larry was a complex yet driven man who vigorously fought oppression under three flags and didn't acknowledge the meaning of quit. Larry Thorne has his own grave at the Arlington National Cemetery, although in Finland too they again consider him a national hero. Oh, and obligatory, the Swedish heavy metal band Sabaton wrote a song about his life called Soldier of Three Armies. Thank you for watching this video. I would also like to thank all my patrons for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and want to support my work, consider checking me out on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you will already gain access to the exclusive Patreon series. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.